I do move in every single video. <laughs> Could just have him like right here and just ignore him, but no, yeah. it'll take up too much of their brain. Yeah. <laughs> Am I a fan of that? Oh, you know, I'm just gonna put him in the corner of the room behind you. Bye. I don't, I wanna like preserve his dignity. I don't wanna have him <laughs> falling off your thing, you know? Oh, that was all recorded as well. <laughs> you should like, I wanna have that in there and like fast forward, you just putting it in <laughs> Yeah, or different cuts of like, hang me here, hang yeah. me there. What's up guys, uh, my name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. I'm here again with Nasir, aka Karma Medic. What's up guys? Uh, this is the second part to our mini-series um, of MMI interviews. Uh, so we'll be making loads of videos to try and help you guys to answer different questions that might come up in the interview. Yeah. Uh, today we'll be talking about privatization of the NHS. You know, what are the pros, what are the cons? Because uh, the NHS is such a huge, huge topic, like it comes up every single year. Yeah. It came up in my interview with Birmingham. Yeah, it was a huge part to the interview with Birmingham. It's actually where I did my worst. Uh, so if I could go back in time, I'd definitely spend a little more time uh, you know, working on the NHS questions. So yeah, guys, the NHS is very likely to come up on your interview. So before your interviews, you know, in the months before, do Google NHS, BBC, NHS, yeah. whatever, and just see what recent news is surrounding the NHS. Definitely. Like for us, a uh, really hot topic last year was like the doctor strikes or a year and a half ago was the strikes that doctors were having and things like that so do be aware of what's going on with the nhs in your time yeah and i, I talked to a doctor as well like, i think what i did as well is i found That's a doctor really who i could chat to ask him like you know what's going on in the hospital what's going on in the nhs because they'll you know they'll know more than anyone else really so yeah so the question is um what are the pros and cons of privatizing the nhs Okay. Uh, yeah, starting off the pros, mm -hmm. I mean, the first point I can say is the government can spend money elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So obviously the NHS is self-funded, it's funded by taxation, yeah. but if there is a small uh, you know, fee being charged, like a £10 fee to see a GP, to see a doctor, mm -hmm. the money could be spent elsewhere to improve healthcare. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it could be used in the A&E to you know, reduce waiting times, yeah. uh, but you know, for a different aspect of medicine that is receiving you know, not much funding. Yeah. For example, mental health. Mental health, exactly. Which is currently getting increases in funding, mm. um, but you know it was lacking before, and that's where that money could go. Mm. Um, so another good pro of privatizing the NHS is that you will have increased competition between the different companies that will provide the services. Mm. So in the past, there was a trial of privatizing or outsourcing some of the NHS services yep. to different companies, and you know just like in a normal free market economy, when there are different companies providing a service, you get competition between them. Yep. And what that usually ends up doing is driving prices down mm -hmm. and increasing the quality of the service provided. Mm -hmm. So something like that could be beneficial in that patients will be getting better healthcare and prices will be lower for patients. That happens a lot in America as well. A lot of companies mm -hmm. are always you know, looking to be the best, to have yeah. the lowest costs. Yeah, exactly. We have, if we had that in England, you know, obviously in England all we have really is the NHS. Yeah. But that does happen in private hospitals. And that could be something that could add to the, you know, to the quality of care um, within the NHS. Definitely. Another thing is that it could reduce the waiting times as well. Um, so obviously right now within the A&E, there's a huge, huge pressure on the A&E &E to, uh, when, you know, when you go to see a doctor, sometimes uh, it could take six, seven, eight hours, although the target is four hours. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing that you'd need to pay a fee to stop people from going to the A&E, for example, uh, you know, for reasons they don't really have to, yeah. they could always wait to see the GP. Um, they'd always, you know, think twice about going to see a doctor. Yeah. And that of course leads to cons that we'll talk about later. For example, you know, not being able to go to the A&E because you can't afford it. Um, but we'll get into that in the second half of this video. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so a reduction in wait times is going to be good for the people who can afford to pay and go to the A&E and have those reduced wait times. But of course, that reduced wait time is coming at the cost of people who aren't being there mm -hmm. because they're unable to afford that care. Definitely, because ten pound to someone who's very rich could be nothing and it could make no difference at all. Yeah. But you know, ten pound for someone who comes from a lower socioeconomic background mm -hmm. could be a huge thing. And it could, you know, it could uh, separate, you know, uh, divide healthcare further. Yeah. And again, we'll go ahead to talk about the negatives in a second. Yeah. So another pro, if people knew that the NHS was privatized and you had to pay to go use the NHS, then it would encourage people to have a more active lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. So if health was something that wasn't a almost guaranteed or given, you would want to make sure that you're eating healthy, that you're exercising, mm -hmm. and that you're doing all these things to prevent your risk of complications, prevent your risk of diseases, so that you wouldn't have to go visit the NHS and pay for it. Uh, one of the things you could say is that um, having the option to pay for your drugs could actually improve the patient's choice. Mm -hmm. So on the NHS, a lot of drugs um, are funded completely by the NHS and you have no choice in what you get. Yeah. Uh, for example, in cancer, there's a lot of cancer drugs that have the potential to increase the survival um, of types of cancer. But obviously, being funded, being publicly funded, uh, you can't have that. Mm -hmm. So if you do have the money to choose uh, what you want, uh, you might have the option of getting the best quality of care that, you know, that could be possible. Yeah. That's a really fair point. Um, and in addition to patients having choice, 
um, linking back to what we talked about earlier with increased competition between companies, mm -hmm. if there's multiple companies providing the same service, the patient can choose which service they want, you know, based on cost, reputation, quality, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, instead of being forced to do whatever the NHS has, you can have more choice. Definitely. And that obviously has cons to it as well, because the richest will, you know, have the best choice. Uh -huh. But we'll come on to talk about that in a second. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right now. So one massive con to having uh, private healthcare is it could become commercialized. Uh -huh. So it could be more about, you know, selling the best drug, um, you know, selling it to patients and become a completely commercial market rather than actually yeah. looking out for what's best for the patient. Yeah. You know? And that's very dangerous, you know, prospect to have really. Yeah, so I actually, I don't know in the UK mm -hmm. if um, companies are allowed to advertise drugs on TV mm -hmm. and in newspapers, are they? Have you seen that? Uh, yeah, yeah, you definitely can, yeah. Yeah, um, you see it, this a lot in the United States mm -hmm. where companies can advertise medicines on the TV and in magazines and billboards and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it becomes really, really commercialized. Like Kenji said, it's all yeah. about how you can sell something to the patient. Yeah. Um, and you know, a lot of people can become tricked by those things. Mm -hmm. They can not be able to make the best decision about it. Yeah, it kind of goes away from like what medicine is about. You know, medicine mm -hmm. should have nothing to do with money. It should be always about providing the best quality of care for the patients and you know having the best choice that yeah. they could possibly have. Mm -hmm. So having a commercial market would be like Christmas, really. Like it, be, <laughs> you know, it would really be like a, an actual healthcare system. Right. Yeah. yeah. You you can always mention that as well. It's a good point. You can say that you know in an ideal world, medicine is about just treating the patient, no matter who the patient is, what their background, how much money they have. But you know, the real world, the real world is the real world. And that's why something like the NHS is really struggling. You know, there's so many people and so much demand and not enough they can do to provide everything they want to. Definitely. So another con of privatizing the NHS is probably one of the more obvious ones that, you know, healthcare won't be available to everyone. Mm. It'll only be available to those people who can afford it. Mm. And uh, like Kenji said to me earlier, it's going to divide the population. Mm. You're going to have the people who can afford healthcare and are happy with the system and how it currently works. Mm. And then you'll have, you know, the homeless people, for example, let's say, or people who are from a lower socioeconomic status. How are they going to be able to afford healthcare if it's mm. private? Yeah, it'll be completely like unequal, you know? Yeah. Is it unequal or unequal? Unequal. unequal, I know for sure. Unequal, <laughs> I don't know if it's a word. Yeah, probably unequal. <laughs> unequal, I guess it's unequal. It will be completely uh, unequal, you know, like like you just said, all the richest people have the best healthcare in the world. So like in Kenya, you know, uh, if you are born in a rich family, you do have, you know, the best healthcare, you live a lot longer than people who were born um, in lower socioeconomic backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like Elysium. Have you watched the film Elysium? No. Okay, it's, kind of, it's like basically, that's Matt Damon, it's a really good film. <laughs> okay. But Elysium, um, so basically, all the richest people live on like a, a fake planet, okay. like a man-made planet, and have this machine which can heal, uh, it can, which can heal anything in your body. Right. So all the richest people like live forever, and everyone on Earth, you know, like, who don't have the money to go it's to Elysium, struggling. struggle. And it'll kind of turn into that world. Do check it out. It's a yeah. check, check that film out. It's a massive plug. Yeah. Another thing is that if the NHS is privatized, it kind of goes against the principles um, of what a doctor is. You know, so a doctor should always be someone who wants to care for the person, no matter where they come from, no matter how much money they have in their bank account. Yeah. Um, but if you do, you know, if they do privatize the NHS and a patient comes up to the doctor and can't afford it, mm. it will lead to doctors actually turning away patients. Um, so that happens a lot in Kenya. You know, like because uh, I'm from Kenya. And in Kenya, if you don't have the money to pay for healthcare, yeah. the first thing they do is they ask you, like, do you have the money? Can you pay for it? Right. And then uh, if, you don't, if you don't have the money, you just can't receive the healthcare. You know? mm -hmm. So it completely goes against what doctors are supposed to do. Right. Um, and so the final con that we have is that privatizing the NHS would lead companies to have incentive to make it all about profitability. Mm -hmm. So companies would be incentivized to try and maximize their profits over providing good patient care. And of course, that's not going to be good for the patient, especially if they don't have enough of an informed um, opinion, they don't have enough information to mm. choose between different companies. Yeah. Um, and it could become about which company can market to the most mm. patients, which one markets most effectively. Um, and of course, that's not going to be good for the patients. Yeah. And it would cause like, a lot of pressure to be on doctors to, to prescribe the best treatment. So that mm. happens a lot like in a bar, for example, where if there's a new product which um, will sell the most, you know, the manager will always tell the doctor, tell the, um, the bartender to, yeah. to push this product because it will sell the most. And they might and, have commission from that. And well. they might get commission, exactly. So doctors might have another incentive, you know, it won't be, they won't put the, you know, the care of the patient at the heart of the decision making process. Yeah. It will be what will sell the most and, you know, what will be most profitable. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely what you wouldn't want in a healthcare system. Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Um, I hope this video has been somewhat informative to you guys. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the NHS is a huge topic. Um, I hate talking about it. I think when it came up <laughs> in my interview, I was like, damn, yeah, this is so hard. 
Uh, but it is a massive topic that you have to fully cover. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope this has given you guys a bit of an idea of what you should say in the interview, uh, of what you should do. Let us know in the comments about any suggestions that you'd like us to uh, do together. Mm -hmm. uh, follow Nasser on his Instagram. His, yeah. uh, he doesn't have Snapchat, I was going to say Snapchat, <laughs> not his Snapchat. Yeah. Dude, check out my YouTube channel. Check yeah. out his YouTube you channel. You guys want to see more medicine videos. All the, uh, yeah, all the links will be on the screen somewhere. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Peace. Peace. That's done. Let's do it, bro. We're going to sleep, bro. <laughs> <laughs>